where's the inspirations come from when you wrote all these great songs um, in the movies? Um, does it change over time? I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, basically, for The Lion King, I was kind of a hard hand and written away. Um, I was very keen to work, to do what I could do, viz write lyrics. At least I thought I could do it. And I was quite keen to do it in a different setting. And Disney were involved with the movie of Evita, which actually didn't, didn't come out until a little bit later because all movies, or nearly all movies, take forever to get together. And I was sort of loitering around the Disney studios um, when we were having talks about how do we get the Evita movie off the ground. And I kept dropping leaden hints to the Disney executive saying, I love cartoons, which I do. <laughs> and I, mean, I did, I, you know, as a kid, a Disney, new Disney film was, was fantastic. And which helped me because I knew them all. And I said, and, and they were just, I was lucky, they were just beginning to revive the cartoon or the animated feature film, as they call it, um, of, of Disney under Jeffrey Katzenberg and Michael Eisner. And they just got going, they had a big hit with Little Mermaid, and they had a bigger hit with Beauty and the Beast. Then they had, well, then they decided, hang on, we can do two at once. So they set off doing Aladdin, and they decided to do Lion King. And Lion King, I think, at that point was a kind of, we'll see if this works. And they, I was loitering around, they said, would you like to do the lyrics? And it was that point they said, who would you like to do the music if this film ever happens? And so the inspiration for the songs in The Lion King really came out of, and of course I wrote the words before the music, um, because Elton always writes that way around, which is unusual. Um, the inspiration came out of the storyline, which I, I was involved with. I mean, you know, one would have endless meetings with about 12 people, you know, early in the morning in the LA, they, everybody gets up early at about 6.30, um, which is fine. If you're on London time, you, you just don't really switch. Um, uh, and it was just working on the story and, and realizing that, that this was actually, could be a great animated feature. Um, and I began working on, on the songs and I, and, I, and I would have to do, I mean, I, I think I did about 15 or 20 lyrics, which, you know, the vast majority, which didn't make it. And they didn't all make it, they, they, they didn't make it, they didn't not make it because they were no good, or some of them might have done, but the plot kept changing. And uh, you'd, you'd, you'd write a song, you think this is a great song, and then they'd say, actually, the giraffe that was going to sing that song is now not in the film. <laughs> so. It was, it was a bit of a drag, that. And of course, with, with animated features, if you axe a giraffe, the giraffe doesn't complain. <laughs> so you, you, it, was, it was a very fluid situation. And, and halfway through working on The Lion King, um, I was suddenly put onto Aladdin. I think, I think I must have passed some audition. Because, sad to say, the guy who wrote the brilliant lyrics for Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast died. And Alan Menken, who wrote the wonderful music, and I've done a lot of stuff with Alan since. Um, they needed pretty desperately a guy to finish off Aladdin. And I was said, they said, forget The Lion King. And I, I thought, I'd be, no, no, you'll come back to it. But Aladdin's got to come out in three months' time. So I was rushed into Aladdin and wrote three or four songs for that. And that was quite helpful for Lion King because Aladdin was running about a year ahead of The Lion King. And I was able to see what happens further down the line for an animated film. And Aladdin did very well, did even better than Beauty and the Beast. And so I, I came back to The Lion King, having been part of a hugely successful film. Um, and, and then Lion King did even better than Aladdin. I mean, the Disney just went whoosh like that. So, but the inspiration for the songs in Aladdin, it came, came from the plot. You know, they said, guy and girl, magic carpet, flying around the world, <laughs> song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a world, a new world, a, a whole new world. Yes. <laughs> But the, but the good thing is you can stick, I mean, I, I, I've always enjoyed sticking in obscure <laughs> references that only I get. In, the, in A Whole New World, the, the end, there's a line towards the end called A Wondrous Place. Now, A Wondrous Place, nobody here will remember, was a big hit song for one of my favorite teenage idols when I was a kid called Billy Fury, who died very young. He was a great pop singer. He was really the nearest we had to Elvis. And Billy, I always loved Billy Fury, and he had his hit court. And it was great just to put a little reference to Billy Fury, who no one in America had ever heard of, into Whole New World. And occasionally I've, I've done that, uh, the odd line from a Creedence Clearwater song, or something really wacky, 
you know, it's, it's quite fun to do that. But um, the inspiration basically for films and shows mainly has to come from the storyline. 